Visit AtomicPromotional.com for cool products at low, low prices. What's going on YouTube? My name's Eric Young and welcome back to another exciting tutorial with RealFlow and Element 3D. Previously I said I was going to do a four part tutorial but I decided to go ahead and shorten that down into a three part tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at combining RealFlow with real life footage. So here's one simulation I have. Here's another. And one more. All right, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with this last one, actually, where it comes here and makes this orb and then shoots water out of my hands. Now, this isn't going to be an actual tutorial. I'm just going to do an overview of how to do these two different types of combining real flow with real life. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off a couple layers here to make this easier to work with. So one of the things I could have done to make this easier would have been actually judge where I would have wanted the water to start. So for instance, if we look over here at the bottom left, you can see your actual frames right here. So we're on frame three, four, three. So if I wanted it to start, say like here, three, four, or just 340 to round it off, we'd say 340. And then we would jump ahead and see where my hands stop. So my hands stop right about there at three or four, oh, 407 seems to be about the right spot where it stops. So that, do the math, 407 minus 340 would have been 67 frames. So if we went into real flow, since real flow does 30 frames per second, so make sure you record your footage at 30 frames per second, I wouldn't worry too much about drop frame. But you see, I rendered a whole lot more then what was the number 67 frames I went to about at frame 86 it stops so I should have stopped at 87 so I had to do some shortening which caused a couple of these layers here if I can get it to show it right I can't really show it but on some of the frames there it is the double frame happens and we want to avoid that because it just looks really bad in the render that I know this was a really crappy render and I'm sorry for that so what you should do is cut it off there and another thing I did was I just used typical regular standard gravity downforce actually I used double gravity there and then I just went in and made the mesh look something like this using the mesh volume filters something I could have done that would have made it better would have been rotating Press E to rotate, W to move, and R to size. So rotating the emitter, and then messing around with the pressure settings to push it out and make it look more like a real uh, push of water instead of just falling water coming out of my hand that's going straight forward. That looked kind of weird. It looks better than just turning it down and setting gravity on because I was just being quick with that. So we'll go ahead and look at the fireball. So what I did for these orbs was I actually just changed the color. They're both the same if you can't tell. One's blue and one's fiery orange. And I used particular layers here. So I have a bunch of particular layers. Motion tracked. And what I did was, here if I turn off all these layers, we should be able to see it. And then I have these cover-up layers down here for I put these big dots. Whoop, too far. Turned off the background. Was I put these big dots and then I used the motion tracker and tracked motion. And then I did position and rotation there. And then I actually frame by frame tracked this entire sequence 
which was very tedious, so I'm not going to do that again. And then I, you know, parented, it, parented that to a null. And that's where the fireball is attached to, is a group track to that. So if we go back here to the water composition. Oh, and these saber layers are actually motion tracked to each hand. And then I keyframed them so that they stayed inwards with the orb, if that makes sense. And the very last thing we'll look at was these shock waves you saw coming off my hands. Those are just from Video Copilot, I think, Shockwave or Riot Gear Pack, I'm not sure which one. And like I said, for all of these particular settings, if we go in the Effects Builder, I can just show you how I did this real quick. So for here, the energy gathering up, I just found it in here. And then for the fire blast, I just did the hazy fire blasting out of my hands. You know, it's all pretty there in After Effects. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next project. So I recorded this on my phone because I sold my DSLR and I didn't have my window open. So the tracking was really bad. All right, so here you can kind of see better. This yellow mask is just a standard head I found on the internet. It's just a regular head object like that. And then I tracked it in PF track. And there's all sorts of motion trackers that you can do geometry tracking in. So just look up a geometry tracker and find a program that can do geometry tracking and just track your face in geometry. But as you can see here, the water kind of doesn't fit to my face because it's trying to fit to this fake 3D face here. So it's not really exact. And when I was making this, the matrix one that looks really good, I used a app on my phone actually. So I use this app here that I'm recording on my phone now called Scan 3D with two ends. And if you open it, just click login because it's in beta. And what you can do is scan objects. So like I went around my hand and tried to scan my hand but you can only do about a 180 pan before it starts to mess up. So you do like a 180 pan around your hand taking pictures. So basically what you would do is take a picture here and better lighting obviously. Take a picture here, take a picture here, take a picture here, take a picture here. It's actually better if you don't move the object. Take a picture here, take a picture here, take a picture here. You get the idea. And so for taking pictures around the face, I just went around the face really slowly taking pictures and then I let it scan it all together and what I got was this model and so what I did with this model was I just cut around the neck cut off the background that you see here in Cinema 40 just by removing the mesh actually and then I brought it in to PF track so I'll go ahead and close this. All right, that recording is saved. And then to drop it in your computer, you just plug it into your computer. If you have an Android, set it to file transfer. And then it's right here in scan 3D models. And here's all of your models that you have. So we'll go ahead and move on. I'll put a tutorial in the description of how to do this PF track specifically but I'm not going to waste time showing you how to do it. All you need to do is scan your face and cut it out in Cinema 4D and slap it on here and then do the track. So we're going to go ahead and now move on to the final project. And one more thing to edit in was how I did that goo animation in real flow. So if we open this project here, we can see that I actually used negative gravity, three different emitters, and I didn't import the moving face because when I imported the moving face, he was moving and shaking off all of it. So what I actually did was I exported this mesh into Cinema 40 by just going to the mesh importer and then selecting the mesh to import. I'm not sure which one it was that I imported, but it's down here. And so what I did was 
I added this particle mesh to a group, scaled it down, then went into the settings and scaled it way down more, as you see. Did my very best to match it up. You see, it still didn't match up quite perfectly. I parented this to the mesh so that it moves around with the head. That way, when I imported it into Element 3D, all I had to do was make these adjustments with the position and scales. Another thing you can do to make this a little bit easier is rename these materials here. So this one was blue for the water, so I could just like rename water texture and rename head texture. So I know which or which when I import it into Element 3D. And then you just close the group, make sure you have your hierarchy set up like this. Close the group, make sure the also make sure you have your uh, textures on the right objects and then close the group and as always just steady bake render find a spot to render important to element 3d the reason I had this pre comped was because originally I was going to go around it like that feather it out well you know maybe not that much and then slowly position and mask this whole scene but I felt too lazy to do that because you see how long it takes for this to render. So I said screw that and I'll just leave those down there rendering. So basically what I did with this project was, as you can see in PF track here, at certain points the track doesn't quite line up with my face. What I actually ended up doing was, and we'll disable that, and so what I actually did was I went into scene setup, I turned this yellow on set the opacity to, you know, say 50%. And then that gave me a, an idea of where the mesh is on the face. So what I did was I went through it and slowly, as you see these K-frames here on the group null, was I moved it around, adjusting it. Even right here, I had to scale it up. I set it up to 102 and then lowered it down back to 93. And it was here at 93. And I had to do a whole lot of scaling to get this to adjust. I had the particle look set to 21, you know, the scale of the group. So it's a lot of scaling and adjusting to get these things just right. But it's worth it because in the end product, you have this nice glossy face with goo going up your face. And then another thing I like to do because it's easy is actually here, if I just delete this layer and duplicate it and call this one shadow, it can go into the output and go to SSS and Fast Blur. I know it's a legacy plugin, but just go ahead and drop it on. And then I set that to about 15. And you see what that does? There's a little shadow behind your 3D element. That looks nice. So that's a nice way to add a little drop shadow behind some quick 3D. And also one last thing was I just threw in a light here because if this light isn't turned on, it's really underexposed and I had a really overexposed shot. So I turned this light up and then I set the intensity to you so ridiculous. And then it matches the scene a lot more. And then from there, I just did some color adjustment to make it look green like the matrix. And then I did some looks to do a little bit of diffuse and stuff like that. And then we have our final product. And one last thing I wanted to mention, someone commented on the video of this fireball and water shooting. And thanks for the uh, tip. He said, hey man, you should add in some flickering effects like around my face, around my fingers, on my arms, you know, maybe back on the walls. And that would add some real realism. And I told him, I know, I just didn't feel like wasting the time. And I'm not being rude, I just... I really don't like wasting that time to just add in some simple flip flicker effects to make my projects look more realistic when I'm just testing, you know, a particle simulation and stuff like that. I'll go ahead and take this project, wrap it up, save it for you guys, so that you guys can take a look at all these settings for yourself to see what I kind of did and just go through this object setting. So I did like 250 stick, no bounce, 0 0.01 particle friction. The, by the way, the more particle friction will make it drag up your face slower. Just press F1 over these 
and they'll tell you what to do. And also some of these will tell you the best working range. So like here it tells you 0 0.1 to, and 0.8. So you don't really want to go between, you know, anything above 0.8 because it tells you this is the best working range, 0.1 to 0.8. I just turn it off, so maybe 0.1 would have been better, but seems like it rendered successfully. The only problem I had was, of course, the ultimate problem of gravity at the top, so it just kept going. Thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry this wasn't a normal tutorial and it was kind of just a run over of everything. I haven't had time to make normal tutorials and I'm so sorry, but I'm going to do my best to edit this together so that it makes some sort of sense. Thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. My name's Eric Young. If you liked it, please like, comment, subscribe. If you disliked it, you know what to do. I'm Eric Young, and I'm out.